Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Twenty one today. Twenty one today. I've got the key of the door. Never been twenty one before. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next video in the history of medicine. Now, I suppose you've spotted. Actually, I'm not 21. But come with me in Doctor Who's TARDIS. Woo! Let's do a little bit of time travel. Back to 1982. Now, in 1982, ladies and gentlemen, I was 21. Here's one of my cards. To Gerard. Happy 21st birthday. Hope you have a great day from all of your friends. P.S. I hope you enjoy your present. Now, what do you think I got from my friends for my 21st birthday? Hmm. Well, here's a clue. Wee. Now, when I was 21, ladies and gentlemen, I had some grey hair. When my brother was 21, he had some grey hair. When my sister was 21, she had some grey hair. So my friends, very nice that they were, they bought me some hair dye. Yes, 21st birthday, here, have some hair dye. Now, the thing is, why would we all have grey hair at such a young age? Have you got any ideas? That's better. Let's get back to me age 19 or 20. Some dark hair. Why? Why would we have grey hair so young? All three of us. The answer, of course, it's probably in our genes. Now, not the genes that you wear. Not at all. Genes. Genetics. DNA. What does that stand for? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Don't worry about that in an exam. Just use the initials DNA. And what is DNA? What are these genes? Well, they pass on characteristics from one generation down to the next. I'm six foot three, so I'm quite tall. My dad was quite tall. My granddad was tall. So that has been passed down in my genes, in every cell in my body and your body, we have DNA, and it controls our eye colour and things like that. Now, what's this got to do with medicine? Well, think of the videos we've looked at. 1861, germ theory, Louis Pasteur, finally discovering that it's germs or bacteria that cause decay and can make us ill. People like Robert Koch and bacteriology identifying the germs. Alexander Fleming and penicillin killing the germs. That was a huge step forward in medicine. They were very, very important people. Progress, change. But ladies and gentlemen, some diseases, some human conditions which affect us are not caused by bacteria. They are caused by our genes, faulty genes in our human body. So therefore, surely we need to try and sort that problem out. And this video, ladies and gentlemen, looks at the story, the discovery of DNA and human genetics and its importance in medicine. We need to go back to the 1950s, four people a woman called Rosalind Franklin, and then three men, Watkins, Crick, and Watson. Four key people, all involved in the discovery of DNA. So immediately we see teamwork as a factor. It's not just one person coming up with the idea. Rosalind Franklin, a very famous woman scientist, using the modern technology of the day, crystallography, she took a very, very famous photograph, photograph 51, showing the structure of these DNA chromosomes. Photograph 51, 
Watkins, who's an expert on crystallography, he sees the photograph. He says, wow, this is important. And he passes it on to two top scientists, Crick and Watson. Not Holmes and Watson, elementary, my dear Watson. Well, this wasn't elementary. This wasn't simple. Crick and Watson used the photograph and used their research. And what they did, they finally discovered the structure, the double helix structure of DNA. It was a huge leap forward in medicine. They were very, very important. As Crick would say to Watson, not elementary, my dear Watson. It was difficult. So they're working in the area of genes, genetics. I suppose you could say they were geniuses. <laughs> Sorry. So 1953, stage one. We finally discover and work out this thing called DNA, which can affect us. Stage one. Step two, let's go forward 30 years to the 1980s. Yes, I've got dark hair still. Well, some dark hair. 1986, they start something called the Human Genome Project. Now, the genome is the word we give to the complete set of genes. And it took 15 years, hundreds of scientists working across 18 different countries, finance, governments providing the finance to do the research, the teamwork, and finally, after 15 years, 2001, we get the Human Genome Project completed. We have the full set of genes for our human body. Another big step forward. But why? Well, it goes back to that thing I was saying earlier in the video. Some diseases, some human conditions are caused by faulty genes. Here's a couple of examples. Some forms of cancer, Parkinson's disease, diabetes, cystic fibrosis, some Alzheimer's disease, sickle cell anemia. These are very serious diseases and they are caused not by bacteria sometimes, but by our own failings, our own faulty or damaged genes. Well, if we know now what is causing these diseases, maybe we can begin to work out either how to cure them or how to prevent them. And this is where we are currently. We are trying to develop, doctors, scientists today are working on what we call gene therapy, replacing the faulty gene, replacing the abnormal gene with a normal or a healthier gene. This has got huge implications and already we have got some treatments. We've now got better skin grafts because of this. We now use certain stem cell treatments to replace the faulty cells with healthier cells. We're beginning to maybe predict, we can say to some women, there is a very high probability that you may develop breast cancer. So let's look at some alternative treatments now. We are beginning to get better insulin for the uh, disease diabetes, which is a very, very widespread disease currently. So because of the work of Crick and Watson and Watkins and Franklin, the woman, and because of the genome project, we are beginning to see a different approach to medicine. Maybe in future, the treatments will be more individually targeted at actual people rather than just, oh, everybody gets the same. So you could say 1861 and germ theory was a huge step forward. Progress was made. It was important. Equally, you can argue that DNA, understanding the DNA was also a very, very important step or leap forward. So DNA, genetics, gene therapy, very, very important in the history of medicine. Me, age 21, with my dark hair. Well, mainly dark hair. Me, slightly older, with no dark hair. Hope it's been useful, ladies and gentlemen. DNA. 21 today. Well, 
back in 1982. All the best. I'll speak to you soon with another video on the history of medicine. Take care now.